Arnold Bucklin, a seminal figure in the world of 19th century art, carved a niche for himself with a distinctive blend of styles that traversed the Romantic, Realist and Baroque traditions. Born in Basel, Switzerland in 1827, Bucklin's artistic journey was significantly shaped by his formal education at the Dusseldorf Academy of Art and extensive travels across Europe. These experiences infused his work with a diverse range of influences, leading to a profound shift towards mythological and Renaissance themes, particularly during a transformative period in Rome. Bucklin's oeuvre is characterised by its eclecticism, merging various painterly traditions into a singular, imaginative vision. His mature period, noted for its inventive take on classical mythology, positioned him as a pivotal figure in the 19th century art scene. Yet, Bucklin's life was not without its trials. Personal challenges, including opposition to his marriage by his family and the sorrow of losing children, coloured his work with a dreamlike and sometimes melancholic quality. Despite these adversities, or perhaps because of them, his art gained widespread acclaim for its poetic depth and became a source of inspiration for symbolist and subsequent modernist movements. Bucklin stands out for his reluctance to identify as a modern artist, instead delving into the annals of art history from the Renaissance forward, embracing mythological imagery with both dramatic flair and extravagant detail. Arnold Bucklin emerged as a central figure in the symbolist movement, distinct from his contemporaries like Gustave Moreau and Odilon Rodon. His works, often infused with a blend of humour and macabre elements, drew from classical mythology to create a unique mixture of the comic and the nightmarish, captivating surrealist artists, including Salvador Dali. From the romantic landscapes, reminiscent of Caspar David Friedrich, to a brief dalliance with French realism and a profound admiration for the Renaissance and Baroque extravagances, Bucklin's art reflects an amalgamation of influences. His work, marked by unapologetic Catholicism and whimsical irony, presages the eclectic and ironic tendencies of late 20th century postmodernism. Why were the Greeks Greeks? Because they created what they saw as seemed right to them. The fresh water of life is what we want, and that is ever flowing for us as it was for the Greeks. We will only be Greek when we grasp it in our own way. In Arnold Bucklin's self-portrait, we are confronted with a haunting yet darkly humorous meditation on mortality. The artist presents himself in the midst of a creative act, brush in hand, momentarily distracted, while an animated skeleton behind him holds a violin and seems to whisper something in his ear. This juxtaposition of life and death starkly embodies the Memento Mori theme, a reminder of the inevitability of death that has been a potent subject in art for centuries. The portrait embodies a confluence of artistic influences and historical references. The presence of the skeleton musician echoes the medieval tradition of the dance macabre, and there is a strong suggestion that the work of Hans Holbein the Younger, with his own explorations of death in The Ambassadors and the portrait of Sir Brian Took, has left its mark on Bucklin. The directness of the gaze combined with the skeleton's macabre serenade, could be seen as a whimsical yet sombre acknowledgement of the artist's mortality. The attire and posture of Bucklin in this self-portrait suggest an informal, perhaps spontaneous, moment captured on canvas, reminiscent of the Barbizon school's approach to realism. The Barbizon painters, 
known for their depictions of rural French life, inspired Bocklin in his youth, and their influence is palpable in the painting's loose brushwork and the naturalistic portrayal of the artist. Bocklin's painting did not simply resonate within the realm of visual arts, it also reverberated through music. Gustav Moller, upon encountering Buckland's painting, was inspired to include the haunting sound of an out-of-tune violin in his Symphony No. 4, further exemplifying the work's far-reaching impact. This painting is a fascinating example of how Arnold Buckland's work straddles several artistic traditions, synthesizing them into a unique and personal style. The image depicts a dynamic scene of centaurs in battle, creatures from Greek mythology that are half-human, half-horse. The influence of Michelangelo is evident in the choice of subject, as it is an homage to Michelangelo's own Battle of the Centaurs. However, Bucklin's interpretation is distinct, incorporating stylistic elements from Romanticism and Baroque, as well as the warm colour tones, reminiscent of German Romantic landscape painters like Kaspar David Friedrich. The drama and movement in this painting are intensified by the Romantic spirit akin to the works of Delacour. While the Baroque influence is apparent in the dynamic composition and the robust physicality of the figures, Bucklin's approach to the classical mythical theme shows a bold reimagining rather than a straightforward reproduction, allowing him to explore the dramatic intensity and emotion characteristic of Romantic art. The scene's setting is dramatic with a rugged, rocky landscape that adds to the tumultuous atmosphere. The heavy clouds and bare cliffs contribute to a sense of raw, elemental force, aligning with the painting's theme of primordial chaos and wild, untamed nature. <laughs> The Isle of the Dead is a powerful painting that draws on a deep well of cultural and mythical references. The romantic style of the painting, with its ethereal atmosphere and meticulous attention to detail, evokes a sense of timelessness and otherworldliness. The influence of symbolism is present in the use of metaphorical imagery, such as the boat, often interpreted as Charon's vessel from Greek mythology ferrying souls to the afterlife. The woman in white can be seen as a symbolic figure, perhaps a mourning figure, guiding the departed on their final journey. Bucklin's choice of the cypress trees, classical symbols of mourning, and the crypt doorways enhances the funereal theme, while the dark, serene waters and towering rock formations frame the scene with a majestic and somewhat ominous presence. It's notable that Buckland's personal experiences with death and mourning, having buried a child in Florence, may have deeply influenced the emotional weight of the painting. The colour palette and a depiction of the natural environment echo the sentiments of the German Romantic painters, drawing attention to the awe-inspiring power and beauty of nature, which can be both comforting and intimidating. This resonates with the sublime, a key concept in Romanticism, where nature evokes feelings that are both overwhelming and exalted. The cultural impact of the Isle of the Dead extends beyond the visual arts into music, with Sergei Rachmaninoff composing a symphonic poem inspired by the painting. Bucklin's work came to be associated with German nationalism, which isn't surprising given the era's preoccupation with themes of national identity and heritage. Its eventual ownership by Adolf Hitler adds a complex layer to its history.
Playing in the Waves by Arnold Bucklin is renowned for its unconventional representation of classical themes. The work features figures inspired by Triton, the Greek sea god, but Bucklin does not recreate a specific mythological event. Instead, he portrays a playful and startling scene he once observed, where his friend Anton Dorn surprised female bathers at the Italian coast. Bucklin's depiction is personal, with Dorm's likeness believed to be used for the Triton figure, complete with implied salacious motives. The painting's mood is complex. Despite the humorous undertone of the scenario, a dark and somber colour scheme suggests a deeper, more serious tone. The genuine fear on one woman's face juxtaposes with the otherwise light-hearted energy of the scene creating a multi-dimensional experience that is at once sensual, frightening, and amusing. Bucklin's attitude toward classical art breaks from tradition. He argued that true artistic creation should come from personal interpretation and contemporary life, not from an attempt to replicate the ancient past. By capturing the fresh water of life, he believed modern artists could be as authentically creative as the Greeks were in their time. Arnold Buckland's Odysseus and Calypso is a captivating reinterpretation of the classical myth found in Homer's Odyssey. Bucklin brings the same vibrant energy found in Peter Paul Rubens' work to many of his seascapes, but in this painting, he shifts towards a more somber and introspective depiction. The painting portrays the moment from the Odyssey where Calypso, having detained Odysseus for years, plays her lyre and gazes anxiously up at him. Odysseus, his back to the viewer, stands enshrouded in a blue veil looking out to sea. Unlike Buckland's more exuberant works like Playing in the Waves, the tone here is melancholic and introspective. The massive dark rocks create a somber atmosphere, and the physical separation between Calypso and Odysseus suggests emotional distance and a longing for return, embodying Odysseus' inner turmoil and desire for his home and wife. The mood is enhanced by the figure's portrayal. Odysseus' stiff, statue-like pose and obscured face contribute to a sense of stillness and enigma, contrasting with Calypso's more animated and emotionally expressive figure. These elements lend the painting a surreal quality, blurring the line between reality and mythology. This haunting quality in Buckland's work presages the psychological depth explored by later artists such as Giorgio de Chirico, whose metaphysical paintings often featured figures in strange, dreamlike settings. The sense of isolation and the dreamlike quality of Odysseus and Calypso can also be seen as an early influence on the Surrealist movement, where artists like Salvador Dali and Max Ernst explored the subconscious and the irrational through similarly evocative landscapes and figures. Odysseus and Calypso serves as a bridge between the vibrant energy of Renaissance painting and the introspective, symbolic art of the 20th century, illustrating Buckland's range and his lasting impact on the trajectory of modern art. In Arnold Buckland's The Hunt of Diana, we witness the artist's revisit to the mythological story from Ovid's Metamorphoses. The narrative recounts the moment when Actaeon, having stumbled upon the goddess Diana bathing, is transformed into a stag and then hunted by his own dogs. While this story has been a popular subject among artists since the Renaissance, Bucklin's treatment of the myth is distinct and characteristically whimsical. The depiction of Diana 
and her entourage is rendered with a lightness that almost borders on the comical. Diana's pose, graceful and delicate, contrasts sharply with the violent fate of Actaeon, hinted at by the stag's distressed posture. This juxtaposition creates an unusual tension within the piece, fusing the serene with the savage. It's an embodiment of the comic grotesque aesthetic that Butlin had developed over his career, marked by an irreverence towards traditional depictions and an inclination towards a more fantastical rendering. This painting, executed towards the end of Buckland's life, is more than a mythological representation. It is a reflective work, a sentimental look back to his early commission in Basel where he painted a similar scene. As such, the hunt of Diana acts as a bridge connecting his earlier works with his mature style, weaving together influences from Renaissance and neoclassical painting with his unique vision. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Your support helps me continue creating more content like this. Thank you.